Hey guys, this is Sean. Today we'll be rebuilding the coil head for the vape only BCC Mega. Pretty nice bottom coil unit. Um, some of the basic materials, materials you'll need uh, will be uh, today I'm going to be using a 34 gauge uh, Canthal round resistance wire as well as a 2 millimeter and 1 millimeter uh, silica wick. Uh, we'll be using a small piece of tape for a nifty little trick that I'll show you in a second. Uh, we're going to be using a resistance uh, meter, uh, one that I purchased on madvapes.com, as well as a traditional pair of small wire cutters, traditional pair of needle nose pl uh, pliers, and uh, this nifty cone shaped uh, plier that I've used in previous videos. It's really good for getting that rubber grommet uh, out, of the, uh, out of the coil head without damaging it due to the rounded ends. So let's get started. Oh, I will also be enlisting the help of a couple uh, sewing pins, uh, also for the nifty little trick that I mentioned with the uh, with the tape. So this is the coil head. Uh, it's one of the first that I've seen that uses a rubber grommet to slide in instead of uh, being threaded. Um, so just note though that it does have a tendency to uh, begin to tear or shred. Uh, maybe kind of difficult to see, but I'm, I think right there you can see that that edge is kind of sheared off. Uh, it will happen. These things will wear a little bit quicker than others, but. Anyway, let's get down to business. The first thing we're going to want to do is use the needle nose pliers, stick one of the rounded ends into the, the uh, center pin plug, pull that out, it should come out fairly easy. You can probably do it with your fingers. Uh, same with the rubber grommet in the center. That should come out fairly easy as well. Okay, uh, next we're going to be removing the stem. Just grab hold of one end of the uh, stem like so. Take the needle nose pliers, should pop right out. Uh, it does snap in, uh, if you use your fingers for that, it might be a little bit tougher. And lastly, let's go ahead and remove this coiled wick, and boom. I've already cleaned this uh, this unit, so there's no need to, uh, to go ahead and do that. So, let's go ahead and start assembling our wick. Now, the, the, the trick that I learned is pretty neat. Um, in previous videos, I've used the pin to uh, to stabilize the wick on the outside of the wick, uh, but due to uh, actually a comment from one of uh, my subscribers, he said, have you ever tried running it through the center of the wick with tape? No, no I haven't. Uh, I've been doing it lately, and uh, after playing with it for a while, it really, really helps. Uh, reason being is that the, the coil has a perfectly uh, round coil around the, uh, around the wick. There, there, there's, there's no... Uh, spots where it's where it's not you know touching wick um, coil exposed to just plain air well you don't want to smoke that because it tastes pretty darn nasty but uh, the tape on the end of the wick helps stabilize the wick keeps it from fraying and gives you a really good base to start with and you should end up with something like that um, should make it a lot easier to coil and you'll get a nice clean coil around it so let's take our 34 gauge canthal and begin to begin to wrap. Let me get this focused for you guys. There we are. I like to do three wraps on one side, like so. And then Drag the wire over to the side a little bit and start three wraps on the right hand side. Um, if these are too far apart, too close together, don't worry, we can tweak that later. Right now, let's just focus on getting uh, a nice base to start with. And that's, that's pretty much about what it should look like. Maybe a little bit more separated, but we, again, we can tweak that later. So let's reinsert this back into our coil head. Uh, a lot of other videos will have you remove the pin at this point. I don't find it necessary, and actually I find it a lot more helpful to have that pin in place uh, to stabilize. There we are. Okay, now with the terminating ends of the, uh, the wire, you want to drag one to, the, uh, to one side, uh, to its closest uh, side of the sidewall, and this wires case it would be this side. Going to continue holding that in place. Take our silicone grommet, 
feed the uh, opposite wire through the center of the silicone grommet. Go ahead and get that grommet in there nice and snug. Okay, we'll take our remaining wire that we've run through the center to the opposite side of the coil head. Hold it in place and reinsert our metal stopper, the center pin. Okay, this is where you get to do a little bit of house cleaning. You want to make sure that neither of these, uh, these ends are touching the, uh, the inner sidewall as it will short your coil and it's not going to do much except look at you funny. So that is, uh, that is not so bad. Could probably use a little bit more work. You also want to make sure that none of the, uh, none of the, the rounded coil ends are touching each other. Uh, those are, the, those will give you hot spots, uh, which also just tastes like burnt wire. You don't want that either. Okay. Pin still in place. Let's go ahead and grab our terminating ends and pull out just a bit to uh, to make that nice and snug. See that works pretty well to uh, to to clear up any slack, of any coil that's inside the unit. Um, very nicely. Okay, and there we are. So let's go ahead and pull out this, uh, this sewing pin. Gonna take a moment to remove the excess uh, coil from this head. Get as close to that rubber grommet as possible. Try not to uh, cut the grommet itself. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. Okay. Now let's start to uh, trim off the excess wick on the sides. Not so bad. I'm going to perform a quick dry burn. Uh, for those of you who have not done this, uh, pretty much it's just to make sure that those no, there's no residual matter on the coil head nor the uh, the wick. If there is residual matter, canthal wire dust, something like that, it's going to taste burnt and nasty and it, it just will not be enjoyable. Now, usually what I do is I crank the voltage all the way up and then bring it just a little bit back. Uh, start to press the button when you see the coil begin to glow orange, uh, release the button. Uh, also, while blowing on it, just a little bit. You blow on it because you don't want that coil head to get uh, red hot and pop. I have not had one pop yet, but uh, you just went through all that work, and I really don't want to start now. All right. Okay, a uh, good indicator that it's finished uh, dry burning and getting rid of the residue is if it has not really much of a residue, like a, a, a smell, no burnt rubber, no cantha wire, it just smells hot. Okay, so lastly, we're going to be inserting our, uh, our one millimeter silica flavor wick. Let's cut a couple small pieces off like so. Fold these, put them over the top of the coil head, just like that. Now, I mentioned this is kind of stiff. Try to pop it in there the best that you can. <clears throat> Darn that stem. and snaps right on. Lastly, we trim up the uh, ends of the one millimeter wick. Reinsert into our base. Screw this in to make sure that we have no shorts. 
3.4 ohms. That's not bad. 34 gauge, if you use 32, you'll get slightly lower resistance, somewhere around the 1.8 to 2 range. Uh, this is Sean, and I hope you've enjoyed my video. Thank you.